Hello there, and welcome to some Crusader Kings 2 of the Game of Thrones mod. I understand that Crusader Kings 3 is released, but the uh, Game of Thrones mod is not, so we are still playing this game here. We've still got to get our Game of Thrones fix now, don't we? We're going to be playing as Renly. I have played this before, but not a long campaign, only a short one, just taking the throne, whatever. I do want to go a little bit longer with Renly this time, and so we will be playing. Now, I'm playing with uh, these rules here, if you wish to see them, just give a bit of a pause and read through them. And let's get straight to it. If you are interested in uh, Crusader Kings free content, just uh, head on over to the channel and check that out. I should have a campaign running as both William the Conqueror and as Ivar the Boneless. Potentially even a uh, YouTuber succession series. We'll uh, see if that has occurred so far. But yes, here we are. Let's uh, get rid of these pop-ups here. And let's get... Oh, we've got loads of pop-ups here. Oh, just free. The blood of... Oh, the old blood of the first men must surely flow very strongly in your veins. Houses with strong first men ancestry, such as the Royces, Umbars, Krakals, Mormonts, Durandons, and Strongs, are all known to often tend towards great strength. It would appear that, though it did not manifest itself at birth, you have naturally pre you have natural pre predisposition towards a strong and re robust physicality. We have gained the trait strong. I'm not sure was Renly known as strong. I know he was known as a uh, basically Robert, but younger and less up for fighting and killing. I'm not sh uh, entirely sure if it was strong, but sure, uh, he is a Baratheon, he should really have that. Stannis is now known as strong as well. Yeah, if, if these guys are both strong, then it doesn't seem like uh, strong is good enough for Robert. Robert should have a lot more strength than both of these two chaps here. He was the man mountain with the huge ass hammer himself, so... Uh, we'll, we'll see. We are playing with the uh, additional Bloodlines sub-mods, so we are going to have some additional contents like that. The next pop-up here we have is, With the support of the vassals of the Stormlands and through the marriage to Mace Tyrell's daughter, Marjorie of the Reach, I have decided to enforce my claim to the Iron Throne against the Lannisters. But there is one more obstacle first, my older brother, Stannis. I will be king. And then we of course have the uh, blood feud with the House of Wild down here. They did uh, go off and cut off the sword hands of Baratheon soldiers who invaded. I'm sure they, uh, yeah, from here with Ori's, um, they did something with Ori's. But yes, uh, this here is not totally relevant to us at the moment, so we will go ahead and go past that. Do not tread on us. These are the uh, House Libertarians, are they? Do not tread on the snake, they say. And we did so, and we got terribly uh, messed up there. Well, not me personally, but previous Baratheon men. Anyway, we are at war with Stannis. Stannis is our brother. He wants the throne. We want the throne. Stannis believes that he is the rightful heir, due to, of course, uh, Joffrey and the other children not being true heirs of Robert. Stannis believes that he is the true heir. However, we, as humble, faithful to seven servants, believe that Stannis um, going over to a foreign religion here is him taking himself out of line of succession. You can't bring a foreign religion to the realm and call yourself legitimate. No, Stannis has delegitimized himself, and so we must remove him for the good of the realm. Currently here we have an army, 5,206 men. There are more people over here, 11,000 defenders of um, Storm's End, but 4,137 attackers. That's not too relevant at the moment. Let's go through our stuff here. We can call our liege to arms. We can call Joffrey to defend us from Stannis. I don't think that should really be there. And a triple sigil, you say. As a Baratheon of Storms, and I proudly bear a black stag with my sigil. But I should also emphasize my position as a third son by adopting a personal sigil. My own of three black stags on gold. Should I adopt this personal sigil? Uh, shouldn't we have the green sigil for a personal sigil if we're going to have one? Anyway, let's go ahead with the time here, because we do have some pop-ups to uh, get through. Uh, Stannis is going to be trying his best to uh, screw us here. Of course, we should have known this. Uh, where, where are my pop-ups at all? I'm pretty sure we should be having uh, pop-ups here. Anyway, let's, uh, let's in fact then go through with the army then, if we're not going to be getting that anytime soon. Keeper of the Swans. We should give that to Lord Swan, but Lord Swan is not currently here, so we'll be giving it to Lord Half instead. The Master of the Horse will give that to the Lord Errol. The Master of the Hunt will give that to the Lord of... Um, Rogers. The High Almona will give that to Lord Kellington here. The Cup Bearer will give that to Lord Estamont. The Most Paramount Knight of the Realm will give that to Sir Bonifer Hasty. 
and any court shooter will give to um, a, more of a diplomat based Marjorie. Yes, Marjorie, she will uh, do a great job there. We have plenty of commanders. Let's go ahead and give Parman Crane a position there. Lord Edwin of Cape Ruff, you should not be here. Sebastian, however, the Master of Stags Den will give him a position. Robar, Royce, the Sworn Shield, and then we'll uh, replace the Guyard Green here with Roland Karen. Very good. Cancel is all well and good. We do need an ambition. We're going to go for the ambition to win the war. We're also going to take the focus of war for now. Not, not hunting, war. We are at war. It only makes uh, sense that we will focus our efforts on the war. We have Edred's, Edric Storm here as our ward. Let's ensure that he is actually our ward, though. Then we should give him a focus. He's very good at martial, so we will keep up with giving him a education in struggle. Very good. We will not be adopting a triple sigil. Uh, we'll leave it where we are. But yes, let's see if we can raise up a fair bit of force. Do I have to wait a day for this to recalculate? No. Well, we'll just uh, raise up everybody then. Oh, of course, that would raise up a few hundred men there. Right. Well, that's um, unfortunate. So let's also call up you guys a little bit closer as we try to get our armies together. We can hold 14,000 here. Well, in total, we have... A fair few more than that, so see if we can get everyone around and out. We'll do forces, we'll hopefully be able to make it over there and rally it together. Excellent. Fionn the Turncloak. News from Pike, Lord Paramount Renly. It seems that after being forced to choose between his true family and his foster family, Prince Fionn Greyjoy of the Iron Isles has chosen to betray his house. It seems that after being ordered by his father, Iron King Balon Greyjoy, to harry the stony shore, Fionn decided to defect. Feigning loyalty to his father, he sailed his longship north, before deliberately leading his own men into a Northman ambush. Some of his crew, including his squire, Wex Pike, chose to defect to King Rob Stark. The rest were executed. Now, Prince Fionn has once again pledged his sword and ship to the Starks, and has declared his father, Balon, a fool and a madman for seeking war with Winterfell. Excellent! Well done, Fionn Greyjoy. Fionn Greyjoy here has made a Terrific decision, which surely will see his balls remain attached. What an interesting development. Now, what we have to do here is get all of our forces together. I'm sure there is an event chain with Stannis, but I just don't see it at the moment. Maybe Stannis has actually uh, chosen to go with, uh, against the choice. If Stannis does get a choice. Uh, your bodyguard, Sir Robar Royce, has announced his intention to seek the honour of a place on the Kingsguard. He wishes to renounce marriage in order to fulfil his ambition and is seeking your approval. Yes, sure, you uh, you have my consent. I would like you to be on my King's Guard, Sir Raybar the Red. Also, uh, Sir Guyard the Green is offering the same. You have my consent. Sir Parman the Purple, again, you have my consent. Sir Emmon the Yellow, again, my consent. Excellent to see the Rainbow Guard here being uh, being up to the job of... Uh, what there? Oh, here we go. The Parley at Storm's End. What am I to do with this brother of mine? He refuses my peach, he refuses my castle, he even shunned my wedding. The whole of the realm denies his claim to the Iron Throne, and yet he will not see a reason beyond his blind pride. Well, the Lannisters can wait until I've dealt with him. I hope your new god's a merciful one, brother. The rightful king is the one with the bigger army, or he has a point my claim is unjust. We will not be supporting Stannis. Stannis, he will lose us most of our own support being a uh, R'hllor worshipper. We must enforce our claim here. The rightful king is the one with the larger army. Before the dawn, it's almost sunrise. The night sky slowly turns from deep black to violet, purple and red on the eastern horizon, bringing forth the thoughts about my brother and the upcoming battle. It was his choice, I keep thinking. He chose the path of war, so I will crush, crush him today. And then the Lannisters and everyone else who denies my right to the Iron Throne. Your Grace, I hear Lady Callan's voice. You promised me a word. I tell the other lords to return to their duties and prepare for the battle. I don't want to hear anyone's talk. I need a moment of calmness. Only Lady Catelyn doesn't move. Just looks at me with her blue eyes filled with determination. I know what she will say, and I already know the answer I will give her. I won't change my mind, not easily. She begins to explain her son's offer. Peace with Stannis? Setting aside the crown? A great council? I sigh quietly and smile a little. I'd laugh at her, but it's not appropriate. Not, not for a king. The time for talk is done. Now we see who is stronger, I tell her, with Lady Brienne, my guard. 
as she helps me with buckling my belt. I beg you in the name of the mother, begins Lady Stark. I am ready to interrupt her, to mock her even. Stupid woman does not understand that, no means no, but something strange happens. I notice the change in the atmosphere inside the tent. Suddenly a strong blow of wind violently erupts and opens the tent's door and moves its walls. It gets cold and the candlelight starts to flutter, making shadows dance on silken green walls of the tent. I hear Lady Catelyn's gasp and the sound of Lady Brienne unsheathing her sword. I put my right hand on the handle of my weapon, but then I notice something moving towards me. A shadow in a human form with a black blade in its hand. Now here we have the option to die. We can simply uh, die and become Stannis. We also would see uh, so Robot of Red and Emma in the Yellow die, but no, we're going to call for help. And then someone's hands push me back. I stagger and fall down, my armour clanging with the force of it. I hear Lady Brienne's battle cry as she raises her sword and tries to swing it through the shadow monster. But the blade cuts through it uh, as if the mysterious figure was made out of air. Lady Stark starts to scream. I try to look at the monster's face, but I don't see much from my perspective. Petrified. I see it's raising its black blade and attacking Lady Brienne with the speed far beyond capabilities of a trained knight. She tries to power the shadow's sword, but she's too slow. I regain control over my body. I turn around and try to crawl my way out of this. I hear Lady Brienne's grunt, but I'm unsure whether she's been slain or only wounded. I need to hide. I need to run away. I uh, crawl to the tent's wall, hoping to escape, or I hide under the table, hoping someone comes to rescue me. No, we're going to crawl to the tent, uh, to the side of the tent, hoping we'll escape. I try to get to the tent's wall as I as fast as I can. But my legs don't want to listen, I struggle to move. I still don't understand what's going on, but I sir, it certainly involves magic. I turn my head around and I realise the monster is close, extremely close. I put my hand on something slippery and I lose my balance, and feel the cold radiating from the shadow's body. I slowly start to accept my fate. The monster raises its black sword, but then I feel something under my right hand, something thin and soft, the silken fabric of the tent. I quickly lift it, letting morning sunshine inside. A warm beam of light lands on the shadow's face, and I notice some similarity to my brother, Stannis. The monster freezes for a second and starts screaming, its voice high-pitched and painfully loud. Then it disappears, turning into a cloud of fog. I breathe out loudly, feeling sweat dripping down my face. I have survived. The terrors of night die in the daylight. We have survived Stannis Baratheon's magical assassination attempt, and we now... We now must destroy our brother. We could try to have him simply kidnapped and not lose any men in this war. I myself am a temperate, proud, gregarious, ambitious man. I'm also a little bit deceitful, so I can't see us a bit intrigue. I can't see us not turning down the option to win the war without blood. We're going to try here and capture Stannis. Now Baelish and uh, Lord Brune and Chelstad are all on our side. Let's see if there's actually anybody else here we could bribe a bit. Godric Langwood is not supportive of Stannis. Let's go ahead and uh, bribe this man to join us here. All these lords, of course, do see my claim as the stronger one, and they do all want me to join. Uh, join with them to uh, oust Joffrey Baratheon. Now, it looks like Rob Stark has turned down a marriage with uh, Rosalind Frey. He's instead married Jane Westerling, cousin to Kanye Westerling, I'm sure. She and her lord, her father, Gawain, have joined Rob Stark, but at the loss of House Frey. Yeah, it's interesting to see what House Frey does here. Excellent. We'll be amassing our men around Galmont and hopefully then being able to attack into Stannis' force. Stannis does have an army going over to Parchments. We could put down the army there. When do you arrive at the 21st of first moon, 22nd? Okay, so you are out. It's actually you who is uh, at risk here. Let's have all of you forces go back this way instead. Excellent. I do want a few more men before we uh, engage in battle with Stannis' forces. I don't want to uh, sit you march in there and lose more men than is necessary. These men here, however, will uh, sadly die. That's a shame. I believe that one of your vassals can be discouraged from associating with conspiratorial factions. That is the uh, Lord Hasty. We could obligate him. We uh, are a uh, proud man. We're not terribly authoritative. Uh, what are you? you you're a patient, deceitful. Uh, you're not the best man. And we'll ask politely. We are Renly, after all. 
We'll try our best there to have it seen too peacefully. Excellent. We now have an army of 8,000 men ready. We can go and engage the Francis forces. But we have a raven from the wall. The wall is under assault, and the Night's Watch is hard-pressed to defend it. They have called on all the lords of the realm to take up arms and aid them in defending the realm from the dangers beyond the wall. I'm sure they can handle a few snarks or grumpkins. Uh, it's all northern superstition, of course. Now we are going to ready our army. We're going to have Loris lead with Parman Crane on one flank and Robar Royce on the other. They are going to meet the enemies in either Fellwood or Parchments. Ah, very good. Bonifer has decided to go against the uh, factions there. Parchments. The battle will happen in Parchments. My incompetent Lord Treasurer has let a group of smugglers into the county of Storm's End. Apparently he thought they were merchants. What a fool. Was one of them Devos, perhaps? Oh, Ronald Peasbury. Young man, good for you. How unfortunate. Um, the maester has become stressed. Now let's see if there is actually anybody else who would be willing to join us here. We are very well loved in the realm, I'm sure there are many people willing to join us. Oh, John Connington. Yes, I, I don't see that one happening. Lynn Corbray is always willing to join the player, no matter who they are. He would be a good Kingsguard. Let's invite him over. Dontos the Sweet. Uh, maybe not. Orain Valerion. Yeah, perhaps. Yeah, let's invite over Orain Valerion. Um, Andrew Estemon, of course. He is a uh, relative. He's in service to Stannis. He could be a good defector. He doesn't follow the same religion as Stannis. I can see him defecting. Let's go ahead and do it. Donor Toyn? Oh, the House of Toyn. Yes, you might want to join this lord here. There are Dornishmen, but I don't think any Dornishmen would be too enthusiastic. Excellent. What I'll do for now, we'll have an extra few gentlemen join us here. It looks like we won't actually be able to catch them here. Let's have this army come down further as well. Ah, it appears that these uh, forces here might get in the way and lead to us losing some men. That's not great. We do have your forces here. They might just be enough. We're going to merge you up. And we're going to have Roland Caron alongside Bryce Caron and Sebastian of Stags then go over to Griffin's Roost to try and deal with this here force. I'm also going to go back to Storm's End with the army of Lord Loras. Hopefully we can do some good here. Uh, Imri Florence would like to marry. We can find him somebody nice. I'm sure Imri Florence is a man who can find a decent marriage. Let's have a look here. Oh, Malario uh, or Malin Oh, I've uh, got the religions on here. I see. So now interstate marriages can actually happen. Not interstate, interreligion marriages. Um, let's see who we got. There is a Lady Swan. She's a bit older, though. Uh, Roxton of the Reach. Yeah, Meredith Roxton. I do like the House of Roxton. As some of you may be aware, I did a series of House Roxton. It was very, very good. And that's a shame. We have got forces up here being engaged. Roxton has accepted the marriage. Very good. He has a son. He's a decent knight. Sir Edwin. Want to come to court at all? Uh, Mark is special interest, though. He might be a decent Kingsguard later on. Oh, we did lose that battle. Well, hopefully the other forces here are able to win. We've captured Salador Sarn. Now, we could ransom him for a load of money, and I think that would be the way to go. We are, however, a homosexual lord here, so we could visit the chambers of the man we have captured, but I don't think Renly's into that. We're, we're kind of uh, content with uh, Loras for now, so we'll simply try and... We could force him back. No, we're going to ransom him. He is worth a lot of gold here. He'll pay handsomely to have himself released. It looks like we are going to win here. And we can take Edric as a squire. I do believe I will. Excellent. We nearly have all of our forces together. Griffin's Roost still needs to uh, be completed. It is now good. We're going to mass all of our forces over at Storm's End. We need to deal with Stannis' armies here. He does have a fair few forces. The uh, House of Florence, however, is not supporting him at the moment. They are still under the power of the uh, of the Reach there. Influence, that's the word. Stannis is marching around though, so we should try and catch his army whenever we can. Oh, I'm not quite sure how, but Prince Stannis has found out about my plot to kidnap Prince Stannis. It must be to do with the matriarch Melisandre, the Red Woman. 
Hopefully, though, we still have a plot go through. Melisandre actually can be bribed here. I'm not going to do that, though. I don't see that as likely at all. Excellent. We now do have quite the army mass. We're going to have it under again, the control of Loras with Parman and Robar. I'm going to send them off to Gallows Grey to try and deal with Stannis' force here. We won't suffer attrition on our way over. Hopefully we can deal with their army very well and see them destroyed. Let's also go to our bodyguards as well. We do have some better people now. Ha. Huh. Emma the Yellow, you are only at 60. Robot the Red, no, not Robot the Red. Emma the Yellow, we're going to replace you with uh, Lynn Corbray. So Lynn the, uh, the Purple, of course, we know about his habits. Right, what have we got here? We are fighting against Sir Richard Horpe, Sir John Flowers, and Morosh, whoever Morosh is. Excellent. Well, the, this army here is going to be absolutely destroyed. Monfred, however, was killed in combat. He fights for the enemy, though, so we're not going to be too disappointed. He was slain by Loras, the Knight of the Flowers. Very good. Excellent. The uh, force here was utterly obliterated. We should go over now and start to besiege places like Woodmere. Try and get some uh, siege percentage going. Also have the rest of this force come up and join us there. Shouldn't be too hard, and if we do get our war score around here, it's quite an easy walk over to King's Landing to try and capture Joffrey. Let's see if we can storm our way through these buildings. In fact, if this force here is stuck to us there, we're going to actually have Roland Caron with Sebastian and Bryce Caron lead the um, other forces over to the Shedden Brook. If they are following this army, of course. Yes, they are. Very good. Well, let's take this. Thank you very much for the war score, and we'll uh, further go ahead there. No, no, not, not you guys. You guys are still going over there. We'll have this army go over to uh, Stone Dance. We will try to uh, secure that region. My court here, Sir Donald Swan, has expressed a desire to get married. We'll uh, find him somebody nice. I'm sure there's someone out there for Lord Swan. Not Lord Swan, Sir Swan. Somebody of a good age. He's 30, so a woman of round similar age. Um, Woodwright of the Reach. Excellent, we'll uh, go ahead with that. But I'll do for this first episode. We have survived Stannis' assassination plot. We just want to get enough war score to have him surrender. And we will march on King's Landing to secure the throne. We might even be able to get a potential... Could we get an alliance through you? We could potentially get an alliance through Edric Storm. We'll give him an educational focus on Marshall, again, because that's what he should be having. But I'll do for this episode. Thank you for watching. I hope you are enjoying the content on the channel here. And again, if you do have an interest in Crusade Kings 3, there should be a few series on the channel already. Go ahead and check it out. I'll see you guys next time. Thank you again for watching. Goodbye.